All right, I want to show you guys how to make a data list within Flash Catalyst. Now, a data list is basically a horizontal, vertical scrolling list. Well, it could be scrolling if you want. Uh, that looks something like this. And you guys can see I just kind of threw in some placeholder content here and um, just to give you an idea. But it's it's static data. So it's basically just stuff you type in or pictures you put in there. And it's it's really meant, I mean, you guys can use it any, any way you want to, but it's really meant to be used with... Um, with data, a database or data. I mean, it could be. So anyway, let me show you how to do this. I'm going to go to Flash Catalyst, and I'm going to open up the original here. So open up the original data list. And of course, we can only have one open at a time. And of course, it can't find my data list project. So there we go. Open that up. And you'll, you guys will see that you start out pretty simply here. Let me pull this down a little bit. So basically, what we start out with is our design. Now, you can put this on a page. We can also make this a subpage or a state of a page, which is kind of cool. But the way it starts, you guys, is we actually create the uh, scrolling area, if you want a scrolling area, and then we create the whole data list. So I'm going to select the two pieces for my scrolling uh, scroll bar, I guess you could call it. And you usually have at least two pieces, the thumb, which is the part you drag, and the track, which is where it goes. So I select both. I come up to the HUD, and I choose vertical scroll bar. And it's going to say, okay, let's edit the parts. I'll click Edit Parts right here. You guys can see that. Now it's going to say, let's click on the thumb and tell it to be the thumb. You can see right there it's required. And then I'll click on the track, which is behind, and I'll say, let's make that the track. And we can make it all. We've got three different states here, you guys, for this thing. So we don't need to mess with that. But anyway, let me get out of here. I'll hit Escape. Now we're going to make this the whole thing. So I'm going to select the whole thing, and I'm going to deselect this background piece, you guys, because I don't want that to be part of it. So we select the content that is going to be repeated, and then we select the scroll bar. Come up to the HUD, choose Data List. You can see right there. Normally it would be a scroll panel if we had it all out there. But I'll choose Data List. It's going to say, okay, let's edit the parts. I'll click Edit Parts. Now it's going to say, okay, well, select the stuff that's going to be repeated. So you guys, we can put pictures in here, we can put text, there's a bunch of things we can do. So I'll select it all, choose part, say this is the repeated item, which is required. It'll repeat it. Now there's kind of a nasty little bit here that um, I probably could avoid somehow, but I don't know. You guys will notice that there is a dotted line now around the whole thing. Well, unfortunately, if we go out to test this, we won't be able to touch our scroll bar because this is on top of it. So what I usually do is move this over to the left so we can get at the scroll bar to scroll it, and we should be good. Now, as far as the design time data or the data itself, if you look down here in the design time data panel, we can click down here, and you're just going to be able to type in data. Like I can type my name here or, you know, whatever you want within reason, you guys. Now, we can go and fill all this out. Like I said, this is static data. So this isn't like pulling from, you know, a dynamic source or anything like that. Now, we can do a couple other things, which is kind of cool. Let me let me do this. I want to actually edit what goes here. So I'm going to double-click on the, on the uh, data list here. And if you guys click on, let's say, this box right here, what we can do is we can say, let's put a picture in there. So if I click on that box, I just drew a rectangle, you guys. I actually went over here to the tools and drew a rectangle. I can come to Choose Command and say, let's rasterize it. So I choose Rasterize. It's going to convert it. Now... We can add this image. Now, if it was an image to begin with, you guys, we could just say, let's add the image to the design time data if it wasn't already selected when I made this whole thing. So I'll click Add Image to Design Time Data. It's going to add it. Now, it's still a gray box, you guys, but if we look down here now in Design Time Data, we'll actually see we have a field for image. So if I click on, let's say, the first image field here, it's going to say, oh, well, where's the picture? Well, we already have the rectangle. That's all fine, but we need to go create a picture. Now, Real quick, you guys, let me cancel this. To figure out what to do, to make the bank your picture, if you guys click on the box here, you can see in the properties the width and height. So we want to make sure our pictures are roughly that size. At least if you guys draw this out, you drew, you drew this, draw this yourself. I mean, you figure out your own size. But I'll click on the image box here to add it. I'll say import. Now, next time we import this, this is actually, actually kind of cool. Uh, we'll only have to do this once. So I'm going to choose from images here, and I'll say fountain small. I already resized it in Photoshop. I'll click open. There it is. I'll click OK. There it is right there. Now I can go to each one of these, and if you want to put a different image in there, you can. I'll click, or I'm just going to use the placeholder front and small. That's fine. All right, now the other thing we can do is, since we're in here, we're dug in here to the repeated item, I could add more text if I wanted to, or get rid of text. 
If I click on, let's say, my text right here, you can see in the HUD, remove text from design time data. Now I want to add some text, so I'll go to the type tool. I'll come out here, and what I want to do is I just want to click and drag and create a little text. So I'll just type in, um, you know, subhead or something like that. Of course, I would want to move it. I'd want to change my size and my color down here so I can make it bigger, make it smaller if I select it. Let me change the color. I'll go with like a gray, that sort of thing. I can drag it around, put it where I want it to go. Whoops, easy. And of course, it just went away. That's great. Let me type it back in there. Subhead. Select it again. Change the color, etc. So you guys, you can figure out how to do this. Go to my, my arrow here and I can move it around. Now when I get it in position, come up here, you're going to see Add Text to Design Time Data. Now if you guys don't want to use the HUD for some of this stuff, you can also come up under the Modify menu and you'll see like Add Text to Design Time Data. I'll add it. It'll add another column out here and just some more text we can add. So I'll say uh, Web Developer, something like that. There we go. And that's it, you guys. If I escape, hit Escape. Escape out of here, hit Escape again, we'll get out. And I go test it out, Control Return, Command Return on Mac. Go try this out and see what we get. We should see a scrolling area. We should see our image. And you guys can see right there. Now, one last thing. If I want to add content, let's say I want to add another couple of rows out here. You'll see down here, it just says in Design Time Data, with all this selected, we can just add or subtract rows or delete rows. So every time I click Add Rows, just going to add another one out here. And there we go. We have our data out here, and we're all set. And we can start just to change this if we want to and do what we need to do. But... Anyway, that's adding a data list within Flash Catalyst.